This video introduces the changes that were done in the 7th version of NPM for better performance, while allowing deterministic and reproducible builds, focusing on the new package lock.json format, v2, and yarns lock file support. Here we begin, but make sure to hit the like button in case you enjoyed, and subscribe to not miss new content. Reproducible builds is an approach ensuring that the same source code, build environment and build instructions produce the exact copies of all specified artifacts, verified with a bit-by-bit -bit comparison. This means, a given source code must create the same result deterministically, the build tools should be predefined, and the build process should validate that the output matches the original. In terms of NPM and YARN, Reproducible builds guarantee that all teammates will get the precise versions of all dependencies, even though working on different machines, and so is the production environment. This is possible because that these CLI tools manage lock files, that are designed to be committed obviously, instructing them how to produce the precise node modules tree. The truth is, that reproducible builds and package lock.json specifically aren't new, and already implemented since npm v5. So, the question remains, what actually was changed? Well, this is what we're going to explain. NPM v7 arrives with a newer version for the package lock.json format, allowing to reduce the need to read package.json files, and to have enough information to reliably describe the full and precise package tree, all by itself. More than that, the resulting package tree using the new lock file is flattened, and this is crucial to boost the performance. Practically, this means that starting on v7, the file is generated with a new set of semantics. On the left there is a lock file generated with npm v7, after installing React, whereas on the right is the one generated with v6. First of all, the lock file version field is an integer pointing to which schematics version was used to generate the file. So, in case of npm v7, the schematics version is 2, which belongs to the new lock file format. Important to note that lock files in v2 are backward compatible with CLI versions supporting v1 lock files, for example, npm v5 or v6. Secondly, a field called packages was added which maps each installed package by its location to an object containing all needed information, about this specific package. Of course, fields such as resolved, integrity and link are still needed and contained. Though, the main change is that with v2 the information is mapped to the package relative location, and not just the package name is done in v1. Notice that the root project is listed and represented with a key of empty quotation marks, and then, all dependencies are listed with their relative paths to the root directory. Thirdly, as said, the new lock file is backward compatible so the legacy dependencies field is still contained. This field by the way had been used to map the package information to the name, and it takes up a position for lower CLI versions that don't recognize the new packages field. And now we can say how the reproducible builds are actually expressed. The lock file is created in advance and committed to the source control. This file contains the resolved package deterministically by a URL to a tarball, while also including the integrity of the relative unpacking location. Put simply, the lock file v2 is sophisticated enough to solely allow deterministic and reproducible builds, without additional gathering information from package.json. So far the yarn.lock files were completely ignored by npm CLI, but the good news is, as of v7, if these files are available, they will be used as a source of package metadata and resolution guidance. In practice, the resolved values that are contained inside Yarn's lock file will clearly instruct the CLI where to fetch packages from, whereas integrity keeps being used to verify that the artifact matches. On top of that, the Yarn.lock file will be handled as well when installing or removing packages using npm CLI. Note that when the package lock.json file exists, it's being used as the authoritative definition of the resulting package tree. So, the yarn.lock file is supported mainly to provide better interoperability between npm and yarn, in order to accomplish missing information if necessary. Another question arises, why doesn't npm just rely on the yarn.lock without managing a lock file of its own? Actually this is explained in detail within the npm's official block, but let's list the reasons in a nutshell. Firstly, Yarn guarantees resolutions by given a single combination of Yarn.lock file and specific CLI version, which means, different Yarn versions can produce different results of node modules tree. In contrast, NPM differentiates between deterministic resolutions of dependencies, and deterministic tree package shape of dependencies. Secondly, Yarn produces in some cases a tree with excessive duplication using its lock file, which doesn't allow NPM to optimize the resulting tree. Thirdly, 
Locking down the resulting package tree shape inside the lock file, allows NPM to support features such as preferred Hadoop, without breaking the ability to produce deterministic reproducible builds. Fourthly, Yarn and NPM v5 or v6 are assisted by the package.json to build the package tree, compared to NPM v7 that merely needs package.json generated by schematics v2. So, to answer the question, the current implementation of Yarn's lock file doesn't have enough information needed for the complete NPM functionality. As of v7, NPM places a hidden lock file inside node modules containing all information about the package tree. The purpose of this file is to avoid reading the entire tree repeatedly. In fact, it's relevant only when created at the time of the most recent update of the package tree. In other words, if different CLIs modify the tree, the contained references might not be relevant, thereby in this case the hidden lock file is ignored. Note that the hidden lock file is ignored by npm v5 or v6, since its lock file version field is 3, which indicates non-backward compatibility, aka breaking change, with older CLI versions. This schematic version would entirely be used in the future, as soon as npm v6 support ends. We already mentioned that using the new lock file the CLI produces a flattened resulting package tree. We also said that that lock file contains all the necessary information, and hereby makes the reads from package.json redundant. Moreover, it accelerates the fund command that allows to retrieve the funding information. Well, those together lead to significant improvements in the performance. We can clearly notice that npm v7 is lower, which is faster, compared to v6 in most of the tests. Don't forget to hit the like button in case you enjoy, and to subscribe to my channel.